and welcome to my first vlogging post video whatever you want to call it um, so in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about what it's like living with a son with drug and alcohol problems well when I say living with he doesn't actually live with me anymore but obviously I'm living with that every day and it's some days you know it's fine but today has been a difficult day and it's always a reminder that it never really goes away and for me my son is now 35 he has been in doing drugs and alcohol since he was 16 so yeah, 19 years and that's something that I've had to make peace with and people have said oh I don't know how you you cope with it well you just do because you don't have any choice but I mean obviously there are different ways that you can I guess uh, of responding and at first it was trying to get him help and trying to get him onto detox and rehab programs which of course never worked because I didn't know enough then to understand that he had to be ready he had to want it and around the same time or well probably it'd been going on for a couple of years but he left home when he was 18 and around that time was the time that I discovered meditation and that is the thing that's got me through really plus a support group in 20 end of, end of 2009 uh, it was when he turned 21 and I discovered that he was on heroin I'd suspected it um, and then I thought actually I need support too I'd been rushing around trying to get him help and as I learned there's nothing I can do if he's not ready and I thought actually I need some support with this as well so since then I've been going to a carers support group so that's an important thing that a lot of people don't realize that if they have a loved one with drug and alcohol issues that you're a carer and a lot of people don't realize that because there's a lot of shame and stigma around drugs and alcohol isn't there and that was one of the ways that the group helped me because I realized it could happen to anybody the other people were just nice ordinary people like me and not the kind of people I suppose the stereotypes that you think about hanging around on street corners <laughs> and so that was helpful and sort of helped me come to terms with it a bit more to stop blaming myself because as a parent you've always got guilt anyway oh well, what did I do that made him turn out like this well there were some things that I did I wasn't perfect that might have contributed towards it he also had an abusive father and um, his father's father his grandfather was an alcoholic as well so you know there are all these all these factors um, and somebody said to me once well you're not the one who sort of put the drink in his hand or made him get involved with that that crowd that was something that he did you know and he might have done that anyway you just don't know you know we can spend ages thinking about oh all the what-ifs but the truth is we don't know whether he was headed down that path whether that's his life path that he's somehow chosen um, because I do believe that we are here in this body um, to learn lessons from life and we'll be presented with challenges and we have the choice 
how we respond to those. And I'm not saying that it necessarily gets any easier. It doesn't. But you become a bigger container so you're able to hold more. And I've recently booked a trip out to Australia, which I'm very excited about. People saying they're jealous of that. And I think, yeah, but this was thinking about this today. But with that comes my son. <laughs> You're lucky, Helen, because you live by the beach. Yeah, this is... Pan out a bit. Yeah, this is at the end of my road. I'm literally just up... I live just up there, a minute's walk away. And it's beautiful. But anybody can live by the beach if they want to. <laughs> they can move there. That's what I did. I'm nothing special. So you really don't want to wish to have other people's lives because on the outside, yeah, the things we post on social media, oh, it looks lovely. But with that, you know, comes all the stuff that we have. Would you swap your problems for somebody else's? I'm not sure that I would because you, because you don't know your problems are known because they're never going to go away. And I think that's the thing that I had to come to terms with, with my son at one point, you know, um, there was no, but the Buddhism talks about the middle way, but in terms of addiction, there is no middle way. He either sorts himself out, he recovers, or he ends up dead. And I know that might sound a bit harsh, but that's the reality of the situation. And for years I didn't see him, he was living on the streets, I had no way of contacting him, so I didn't even know for a while whether he was even still alive. And people said, well, how do you deal with that? I said, well, it, it's, it's the, comes back to the serenity prayer, doesn't it? Letting go of the things that you, you can't control. I can't control what he does. I've never been able to do that. Um, never will be able to. I can't control what anybody does. I can only control how I respond. And getting angry and upset about it doesn't help. It doesn't mean to say I don't get angry and upset. I've cried a lot today, but I have to let the tears come. And I think that's the important thing if you've got this going on in your life to allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling. Don't try and suppress it. Don't beat yourself up either. It, have compassion for them. Have compassion for yourself. And it's hard at first to have compassion and if that's hard acknowledge that too just be honest with where you're at with your feelings you know when my son says some things actually I'm not going to say that because I don't really think that's appropriate to say it on, on a video because it might upset some people but it's it's like there are times when I think actually I don't like my son very much and I'm going to be honest with myself. I don't think he's a nice person because of the way he's acting. And I'm not going to, now I'm not going to feel bad that I think that way <laughs> because that is the truth of, of my thoughts. That is in that moment how I'm feeling towards my son. It doesn't mean I don't love him and I don't care about him and I wish him, I still wish him well and I wish him happiness, but it's his journey and I can't make him happy. He's the only one who can do that. And when he starts up blaming me for these things and then, yeah, it, it hurts. It feels like a dagger going in your heart sometimes, but it's like, well, it's not personal. This is you know what he's going through and he's just lashing out he's been triggered he's like a 12 year old inside so it's like seeing that little boy that I can still have compassion for so you know if you have been through this please be kind to yourself I've also done you know work with unpaid carers myself I've coached them taught them mindfulness to teach them the things that have helped me on that journey and it is a journey. It never stops, you know. Life is never going to be perfect. And it's never going to be 100% sorted. Because as happened today, you know, it can, things can blow up at any time. You just never know. And I think um, very appropriately, as I've got the sea in the background, 
it's about not trying to stop the waves because we can't think of King Canute <laughs> because he'd lose his slippers or something because the sea wouldn't obey him we can't stop the sea but we can learn to surf the waves some days it'll be calm other days it'll be a bit more choppy and um, but the important thing is is that we don't allow ourselves to, to get drowned in it that we can feel whatever we're feeling and acknowledge that and know that actually if you need to take some time out for some self-care that's okay and not to be too hard on yourself so i hope that's helped do leave any comments in the comments below if you've got any questions or you can email me email is in the description box as well and if you find this helpful do share with, with a friend who might be going through similar even if you're not we all know somebody even if we it's not affecting us directly everybody knows somebody who's affected by it, it, it it's it's rife and um that, and as i said there is a lot of shame around it people don't want to talk about it and that's why i do talk about it because i want to remove the stigma and shame around it and because then we're, we're more able to help people so thank you for watching and i will see you again very soon in the meantime, take care, go well and lots of love.